So questions about kids with ADHD uh, and, and also kids with uh, problems with the large numbers. I work with the ADHD. Um, kids with ADHD are, uh, need something to help them focus. So the more intense or exciting you make it, uh, the easier it is for them to focus. They can definitely focus for two minutes if they're motivated. Um, and so um, one of the things that I recommend highly is that you have people, when they uh, complete a lap, hold up their fist. Um, and then you call out reinforcement, wow, you're on your second lap, um, because they want to keep, you want them to keep going. Uh, and so um, that helps an ADHD kid think of this as a race, like let's see how fast I can go, you know. Um, the other thing about the numbers is what we find is that when kids are involved in the task, they learn to block out that other stuff because they really have to pay attention to what's going on here. And so they're able to do that. I have a very, very, I, I, I have never personally encountered any kids, and I've taught lots of special ed kids, that couldn't, couldn't do this. Um, they, um, th they won't, you know, they'll play around and, they, you know, if they can do other things, they will. But if you get them focused on it, they can, they can go around and do this. And uh, the same thing with the voices. Um, now, you have a bit of an issue because everybody's starting at the same place because I put you all on the same sheet. But in the classroom, they're all on different sheets. And so they don't, they just block out the other stuff. It's a little harder for the student who's listening and they have to be close. And so you want them to sit in a way, like um, some of these pictures have them. S so this one, well, actually, these are pretty good. So these are kneecap to kneecap. Um, so they're pretty close that way. These guys are over the same desk. Um, but don't put them on two desks like this as they're too far apart. And they'll have to shout, and then it'll be too loud. So the closer you can get them together, the easier it is for them to hear. And then if you have some kids that just get loud, you know, you have to get them to use their inside voices so just their partner can hear them. Um, but uh, in general, um, and some people have, you know, they use the corners of their room and let some pairs go over that way. Um, but um, really for monitoring, it's better if they're all closer because you want to get around and see everybody. Um, you want to be leaning in and listening um, so that you can hear that corrections are going on. And then uh, I would definitely um, get into the habit of praising people um, for, um, for doing corrections. So um, and you can do that after if you want. You know, I saw so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so doing corrections. But you really, that's the heart of the program is that they're going to do those corrections and help their partner when they need it. And so um, that's, that's a key thing to do this. So the, that's one of the first things that goes by the by. So you have kids, they're still reading the answers, but their partner's not listening to them. And, um, and then they're going to make errors, and then they're going to make errors on the test, right? It's, it's essential that they're listening. So the best way to make sure that happens is that you give praise and recognition to people who um, you heard making corrections. I mean, you could do something as simple as uh, good correctors, and, um, and you walk around and listen, and you write up the names of people that you heard giving uh, correction procedures. You know, and no further anything than that. Uh, these people I heard giving corrections, excellent. Kids are going to vie for, you know, wanting to get their name up there, and so they will listen for and make corrections. 